the first memory I have is the anxiety that I remember feeling as a small baby because in Israel where I was, it wasn't the, the, the country of Israel, the state of Israel, but it was the land of Israel where I was born in Tel Aviv. And what year was that? 39. Um, we, were, we had air shelters where I remember the, the entrance into the apartment building where I grew up was an air shelter uh, because uh, Tel Aviv was bombed by the Italian. Uh, and there was also the fear of Rommel's, the German army, coming to Israel. So I, I have a, a, I still rem I remember clearly the air shelter itself, but I also recall the fear and anxiety that was felt around. And probably that would have been one, if not the first memory. The other one was at the end of our street, uh, in the, the, the lap deserted uh, petrol station, lived the family where the mother, we called, the, the kids in the street called, in Hebrew I'll say, Rachel HaMeshugad, crazy mad woman Rachel. And she would run up and down the streets just about every night, screaming at the top of her voice. She clearly experienced, in retrospect, she was hallucinating that she was being chased by the Nazis. So I remember my nights hearing her screaming. Uh, the other powerful memory I have of the Holocaust is 45 onwards, the radio station in Israel, in Hebrew, would have hours upon hours of uh, announcement. I recall the Hebrew words for it. Asochnut ha-Yehudit mevakeshet et ezrat ha-tzibur bechipus krovim. The Jewish agency is seeking the assistance of the general public in locating members of families. And it went, out, out, went on for hours. The description of such and such is looking for his sister or brother whom they haven't seen since such and such. And that was a constant sound that was part of my childhood. Um, maybe the next one that I could describe is in, I think it was 51, that the argument in Israel started about the agreement with Germany for reparation. And Israel was torn apart. Begin at one point, who was the leader of the opposition, threatened to start a war. Uh, people demonstrated in front of the Knesset Israeli parliament against the reparation. The people were wounded in the fighting between Jews about those who were for and those who were against. 51, I would have been 12, and it, I, it was deep part of my, my experience. It was there the whole time. Uh, the other, perhaps, was I started reading adults' book very early, and probably one of the first adult books, because it's a different section of the library, was... Uh, a book by a man called Yoel Palgi, who wrote a book in Hebrew is titled Ruach Gdolaba, a big wind came. But it was the story of the Israeli um, paratroopers who jumped into Europe in order to help assist in the Jews of Europe. And he ended up in uh, Hungary, and he wrote also about Hannah Senesch, who became much more famous than Joel Palgi. 
And then I remember reading a book by a man who titled his book Ka Tsetnik, and then the number, meaning an inmate of um, the concentration camp. I go to the, the other book that I started reading was by a, a man called Ka Tsetnik, which really means an inmate of the concentration camp. And he published always by the name of Ka Tsetnik and then his actual number. Uh, and if I recall correctly, the first book of his, which was called in Hebrew, I guess it's English too, Salamandra, I think he published in 46. So, and I think I read it sh very shortly afterwards. Uh, a few years later, I think it would have been 52, 53, he wrote another book called, titled The Dollhouse, which was a description of, it was translated to many languages, so I'm sure it's available in English too, and you may have read it. I actually read it. And it's a description of Jewish women being put to prostitution. As it happened, the two first books that I recall by Palgi and by Katsetnik have both been surrounded by a lot of controversy, including the claims that about the doll's house, that it's pornography, that it's incorrect, etc., etc. And as somebody who has now spent his life, in a way, thinking and reading and talking to survivors about the Holocaust, there is hardly an issue to do with the Holocaust that is not surrounded by controversy. What did I retain of those books? And what do I remember? I think the only thing I remember is the impact, the emotional response not any of the content. But maybe I'll stay with this guy, with Katsetnik, because it's an interesting story in that what happened is he publishes under the name of Katsetnik until in 1961, the Eichmann trial starts in Israel. And he is one of the most important witnesses during the trial. For the first time, the public finds out his, his true name, which was Yechiel Dinur. And when he gives testimony, he faints. Um, and he's, all his life he was very reluctant to be known and identified by his correct name. He said, I'm an inmate, and I want to be known and remembered as the inmate of Auschwitz. Um, but I kept following him, him, and what happened also, in 87, years and years later, he goes to Holland for treatment with a Dutch psychiatrist who treats him with LSD and brings back memories of the Holocaust to him. And he describes it in another book. And then he changes his position because until that time, in the testimony that he gave during the Eichmann trial, for example, he says, it's a key concept of his, Auschwitz was another planet. It was not, cannot be understood in any human terms and categories. After the treatment in, uh, in Holland, he writes that he changed his mind. And he says, the Holocaust was carried out by human being and inflicted on human being. And by the way, I think this tension between how do we think about the perpetrators and how do we think about the victims in ordinary human terms or we try to use different terms. It's a huge tension that 
I think forever impacts on the way we think of the Holocaust. And then Christopher Browning, an eminent American academic, wrote Ordinary People, mm -hmm. and looked at an Einstein's group, group of men and analysed who they were. And the same thing, so it debunks that it was a special, special place mm -hmm. with special terminology. Ordinary people doing these extraordinarily bad That's things. Right. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And it applies to the survivors too. You see, in the language, the daily language, when survivors, or sorry, the, the victims, those who died, perished, murdered, killed, often we as Jews refer to them as those who died al Kiddush Hashem, who died uh, in, to, sanc to sanctify the the name of God, which to many others, it's an obscenity. Absolutely.